for you, for those of you who know the Michael teachings, you know about uh, our, our life quadrant positions, yes? Um, which is the love position, knowledge position, power position, support position. And, um, <coughs> uh, I'm starting to get a little hoarse here. <clears throat> what this one would be an interesting use for is if, if you have a number of people in a, in a team or group, heck, even a family, and you can actually play with this consciously. This is one of the type of spreads that you can use this uh, both diagnostically mm -hmm. and even energetically for testing things out. So let's just say um, you have four friends and you assign a person's name to each one of these. Say, all right, well, what if uh, Sarah's going to do the love position? And I do the knowledge, and Susanna does power, and Thomas does support. All right, so that's those are the boxes, okay, that we, we've named. When we put a card in there, we're saying, oh, Sarah's going to bring this, uh, you know, this unconditional, uh, loving, higher emotional, she's not going to be biased, you know, by anything. She's just going to, you know, bring her all to it. Uh, for me, this is, I'm on purpose, man. I got a reason for doing this. Um, and then Susanna, when we look at this, okay, <laughs> she's going to be real clear about whatever course of action uh, either I'm steering her on or Sarah's cheering her on about. She is, you know, she's taking it to the moon, man. Where do we put this? <laughs> you know, she's serious about it. She knows how to operate this. A good solid, skeptic is a great solid card, I would think, for a decision maker. Okay, in the positive That is an artisan card, dude. And it's an artisan card, yeah. yeah. And there you go. And there would be a good, another good example of an alignment issue, a positive alignment issue. Here's Suzanne, uh, an artisan, getting a card that's in her set. So it would be, a, uh, I would think, a... Now, Thomas here <clears throat> yes. looks like he, uh, he either has a beating problem or a drinking problem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we don't know. I mean, now submission would certainly be... Would, would from the at least on the surface energy of it seem like it could be a really good you know support position right yeah, but I'm on the ropes but you're on the ropes you know it may not be when you because you at that point being in subservience you may not really be providing you know the catch-all um, uh, fill in the gaps kind of guy you might be waiting on the sideline being you know waiting to be told. Or and maybe the other team members have to be aware that they may be treating Thomas in such a way. Oh, as oh, because the support people are often like the dog's body. Not that you need it, but boy, you've got an entirely another gig with these things. You know that, <laughs> don't you? Gee, many Christmas, you do. So okay, there's so there's another one. Now, what you can do also, if you wanted to check it out, is you switch people around. So what if I were going to be uh, the love position person and Sarah the support and so on and so forth. So you put these different configurations together with different people and just notice how the configurations come out uh, as groups. So there, you can do that. There is cool. another way of yes. saying the work quadrant. Go ahead. As my teacher taught me. The love position is <clears throat> the envision, the envisioner. The knowledge position is the transmitter receiver. The power position is the flow director. And the support position is the stabilizer. Wow. Mm -hmm. So kind of a, so a so electric circuitry. So you see it more circuitry. as a functional. You see yeah. it more as function. So, so then you see the vision is being on the top, and the, and the transmitter receiver brings the vision down. And the, tra and the flow director makes sure all the, that it gets to everywhere it needs to go. So you can see the transmitter receiver is being a vertical orientation between the stabilizer and the envisioner. And then the uh, flow director gets it out where it needs to go, and without the stabilizer to move the whole arena forward, nothing moves because they make sure all the ducks are in a row before the vision could be uh, realized. That sounds like a Tachi Ren. That's assessment. definitely a Tachi Ren. Yeah, assessment. I thought so. I thought so. Okay. <laughs> so, great. I'm going to email you to, and remind you about that because I, I would like to include that. I had never heard that before. But okay, so another one, you know, another place. Um, here's the future Oracle spread. You're asking a question literally about some kind of circumstance, uh, you know, ahead of you, most likely, um, or maybe even in the in the moment, um, you know. But notice you've got the inception of where it started, you know, what is present, uh, what might be blocking, you know, the thing in the way. Um, risk audacity means just that, you know. What do you have to? What possibly uh, do you have to alter? 
you know, to make things happen, and then a prediction about the outcome. So, a five-card spread. Anyway, I'm just walking you through these, and I'm... What if I go to go this ahead. wedding? What's that? Let's have the question. What if I... What if I go to this wedding, and it's somebody that you've had karmic uh, okay. issues with in the past, but you've okay. been invited to this wedding, and you're not sure what's going to happen when you go, because there's been history. Okay. So like, let's just... say your ex is getting married, and you go to find him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Okay, so the, <laughs> oh, so the question has been put out. Okay? So, the, your ex is getting married, and you've been invited to this wedding. <laughs> and this is a layout to evaluate whether or not you go. Is that right, Susan? Well, or just what's going to happen if you go. What, okay, what's going to happen if you go? And then by the, on that basis, make a decision whether okay. you go or not. And then, okay, good. Very good. Um, so reading that with that idea in mind. <laughs> That's twisted, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yes, honey. It is twisted. And it's, how easily it came to you. <laughs> it's just hypothetical. Boy. I have gone to weddings of my exes. <laughs> just asking for a friend, right? Oh. No, no, I haven't. It's actually good to do it very well. But I, anyway, yeah. yeah. When you're doing a future oracle, it is good, at least in this case, on this on this slide, to have a question. <laughs> so I have to like it. So what would so, be, so the inception of it <clears> is... What do you notice lessons. about more cards, by the way? We got two in assimilation. There's more cards up the complexity. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah. So it makes you think a little deeper, huh? Mm -hmm. Doesn't it? And these boxes help us think about the specifics of what to think about. So isn't it interesting, though, we've got four positive pole cards, two of them assimilative, and we have a negative card in a blocked position. So in other words, is our ego block standing on the sidelines watching? Are you just stalking him by going to his wedding? Are you? Exactly. <laughs> or are you really thinking and watching them through the keyhole, right? You know? is, nothing is as it seems. <laughs> nothing is as it seems. That's right. So anyone have a wow. sense of whether they would go or not? Yeah, what it looks like is that you might come to completion around it. Yeah. Maybe you could move on then from that act after yeah. you danced at their wedding. I think, yeah, that one here is risk yeah. connecting. You know? Risk just, you know, being side by side, holding hands. And in a, an ordinal implies a very personal way. Mm -hmm. you know, not unconditional love or Aren't something. Aren't these all kind of ordinal, most of them? No, a, well, a good one, not. a good one. Um... um Actually, yeah, this is uh, this one is the only one that actually has ordinality. We have neutrality here. Yeah, the two. And these other two are are cardinal. Uh, well, these no. uh, uh, these two. Uh, somebody was asking me earlier when I introduced the augments, the covenants, and then the soul age cycle cards. Mm -hmm. Remember, they're outside of the overleaves. So technically speaking, they're they're not considered an ordinal or exalted. They kind of like show up in context to what the other cards are. So it might be, I mean, granted, one might say that the young soul or adolescence card in competence could probably be exalted because that's when we're at our biggest, baddest, and best, theoretically. Kicking ass. Yeah. Kicking ass on the physical plane. A couple of doctors here. You know, one of one of each uh, gender. So there's there's none of this inequality shit. You it know? could be and literal. The talking. X could have been from high school. Pardon me? Could it be literal? The ex yeah. in your high school. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> really, that's right. Here's a couple, isn't it? <laughs> that they were from my... I love it. Oh, my God. So, folks, call, call Susanna anytime you need help. <laughs> we'll get your, we're going to get your phone ringing off the hook. On, oh, God, it already is. Things. All right. So, overleaf spread. Notice, Ooh. you know, again, you've got the right. positions are defined by the uh, individual... Uh, overleaf uh, positions. And then, just like I showed you how <coughs> Peter did it, you know, he separated each of these into stacks and then just took one from each stack and then put it in here. Um, any patterns or anything you notice uh, that comes up about these? 
just occurred to me that if you're a fiction writer, this would be a great way, a system, to come up with character. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. God, girlfriend. In your spare time, right? What a, jeez. Well, that's what my writing's my thing, but I don't have time. Right yeah. Now. Well, well I, what a great way to come up with characters, like you said. Boy, you just you would, you would be able to nail that character if you understood the system. Yeah. yeah. Well, five of them are in expression. Yeah. Good, good. Five the blues of them are and the in purples. expression. Well, maybe three. I think that's a blue Well, one. we oh, have three yeah. artisan cards. Oh, oh that's purple. And no then we have two sage cards. Two sage and... Okay, it's hard to see from down here. Yeah, it's hard to see. And then a red card, that's action, right? Then we have a, yeah. then we have a chief feature. Or, you know, a martyrdom Warrior chief feature. Warrior and server. Really? Warrior's martyrdom? No. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. Warrior's martyrdom. Wow. And then oh, yeah, that's patience, true. And yeah, patience. we're going to... We're going to take that hill. Man. That's right. That's exactly. right. Exactly. If I die, I'll die a hero. Yeah, that kind of thing. You go right ahead. Um, <laughs> here's your family ink imprinting spread. Father, mother. Ooh. Um, yourself. Okay. Sibl I have siblings or pets for people who were born uh, without siblings. A pet might have been your, you know, significant other. Or a cousin. Or, something. or a cousin or something of that nature. Someone who who Whoever yeah, fits that bill for you. Whoever was significant. Then it comes into more of your modern, you know, your current time of life. So how does that affect, you know, the, the spouse or partner you chose? Um, what about your children? You know, oh, and one of your children is how you present yourself to the world, right? And then the last one is, this, you know, what are you, what are you looking to do with your life? As make a, it to old age. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make it. Right. <laughs> that would be good. I like it already. That's right. And then last one, we have a revelation spread. Wow. Uh, wow. History, potential, the interference, what's your protection, what's going on in your unconscious, what's looming ahead of you, what are the karmic themes behind this. Again, this is your broadest possible reading. Yeah. I went through about a dozen different kinds of systems and, uh, and uh, these were some of the general kind of qualities. Yeah. <laughs> um, hopes and fears, you know, what you're trying to achieve, but you also what you're afraid you might lose. Um, what you do to, you know, uh, strengthen your resolve, or in this case, perhaps undermine it. This one says just be impulsive and just, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, interestingly enough, look at the end. What gets gotten? Karmic resolution. Or no. more karma, one or the other. Yeah, or, <laughs> or, yeah, oh, yeah, or add karma, right. Just, just, just add karma, yes. There you go. You want a hard cake? Just add karma. That's right. right. You then, improved, too. This, is the, this one is not exactly a spread, but for those of you who like to meditate um, on symbolism, uh, I call this the Overleaves Mandala. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> now, these are my Overleaves, just so you're aware. And you can kind of place these randomly as you, as you experience these playing out in your life. So, um, of course, my role is the central, is definitely for me, the central awareness of, of, uh, of who I am, and so it's a big part of me. Um, following that, in many ways, my soul age impacts me uh, quite clearly as far as my overview of the world. Um, then both my goal and attitude... I'm aware of how they influence me. You know, sometimes the goal doesn't let me rest because it's growth. Um, attitude can make me, you know, can make it so that I, I'm generating ideas all the time, but they also can be sometimes on the naive end, you know, just absolutist or, uh, or only um, partially thought out. On, on the bookends here, I have both of my chief features, self-deprecation, uh, affects the idealist for me, and stubbornness affects the goal, which, as uh, you might well imagine, it's like you know having an accelerator with your foot on the brake. <laughs> All right. So, I, I like, and then of course my centering and my part down here. I'm emotionally centered in the intellectual part. My um, uh, uh, come on, brain. S's twin is a scholar. Uh, my mode is uh, passion, and then my casting position, primary casting, is server. And it would, it would be in a priest row, by the way, if I added that on. And so you can take the cards and represent all of it for yourself. 
And sometimes looking at it, um, and I've literally done this, and just kind of looked at all the, the, the pictures and all the, the energies of it, and just kind of, you know, felt it out, see, what it, see how it struck me. So this is one little exercise that you can do that's, again, not really a, a, a spread per se, but it is a, a way of, uh, of experiencing. Is that in here or on the paper? Um, the mandala? Yeah. The mandala is uh, in the handout. Uh, but all the, all the spreads uh, are start on page 19. Okay? And by the way, I'm sorry, by the way, not 19 in the handout, but 19 here in the booklet. Okay? All right, so. magnifying glass. So, you yeah. guys, here's the deal. It's time to get creative. This is where I'm taking you a little bit outside of your comfort zones. And what it is, is you get to not only define, a, you know, whoever you're reading for, define your question, but you get to define the placeholders. So it's going to look like this. So up to, by the way, I'm not suggesting you have to do a four card spread. If you want to do a one card or two card or three, that's fine. But no more than four. I don't, I don't want to get this too exaggerated this early on in your practice, okay? But some folks, you know, have a, a knack for this. Uh, others, you, you know, may realize that just having two is plenty. This line above, it suggests that this is the names of the placeholders that you put in there. So maybe, maybe it's a, a what could have been. What will, you know, what uh, is still possible? Um, what do I do next? Okay, something like that. About a practitioner's layout. Healer, client, issue, outcome. God, you are just like on top of this girl. Okay, so there you go. She's got a practitioner's layout. You got it? Okay. Healer, client, issue, outcome. So, given that just that one little thing, let's go back a sec here and I'll, uh... So, now, look, here's some other ones, just in case. Okay, it's mom, dad, me, or me and my spouse and kids, work, home, money, love. You know, these are all the kind of things, again, you could put as labels for those uh, particular placeholders. And then when you choose a card, it's addressing that unique placeholder. You follow? Mm -hmm. So, you ready to try <laughs> Ready to sleep? <laughs> Have the carbos hit yet? <laughs> okay. All right. So remember the whole idea of unpacking layers. You know, look for positive or negative, pole, negative poles. Look for sets, groups, clusters if they're present. Um, well, so you can rearrange them if they seem like they're. And that was the next thing. Yes, is um, mm -hmm. if you, when you two are doing this. And by the way, so let me add this uh, this other instruction that. Um, that Susanna pointed out that I uh, forgot to add before. And that is, you're going to each take turns doing this. So um, if you if it's time to change so you can get a new partner, then definitely do that. Um, but when whoever decides to read first, um, the recipient is going to say, okay, I want a two-card spread, and these are the boxes. Okay. So you label the boxes for you. Now, by the way, on page six in your handout, we finally are going to get to use this. Hey, I believe it's pick. Oh, then try pick. Keep going. Keep going. I was wrong number. Keep going. You'll find this this picture on the page that I'm looking for. Page nine. Okay, well, it's six upside down. Which is where my brain is right now. Upside down. So you can literally use this for this exercise. You write on those lines what the, what the name of the important placeholder is, and then you can use the box, you know. You can lay the cards in it, or if you want to just write all your little notes about what it meant to you, et cetera, et cetera. Might be interesting to assign body systems, like if you were a practitioner and doing healing work. Each of these sections off to look into doing that. Oh, please do. So, do you want to get it? Dear, it? remember, you know, I just built the car, 
you're going to drive it, you know, and whatever we want. And in your particular case, I know you're going to put it up on blocks and take out a welder and just start cutting it up. Man. That's going to be quite a screaming engine. It's going to be, I'm sure it's going to be one custom job. It's going to be a muscle car. Muscle car. <laughs> I always uh, tell people that, I'm, you know, because I have 20-minute sessions uh, after they've had an initial session that I call like a tune-up. It's like I'm the pit person, and they come screeching in. I change the tires, and they screech out. <laughs> you know? It's the pit stop. The pit stop, exactly. Okay, so pit stop. Exactly. time to change partners. If you're sitting by somebody new, you don't have to move. Okay, but let's stay right if you have, right. <laughs> I mean, it's not enough. It's not enough. I mean, it's sentimental. You know, I mean, it's not even like true love. It's just it's oh, it's sweet. Yeah, it's, you know, it's not a big enough return mm. for the outcome, the for the amount of work that you're putting okay. in. So, you know, I would just say reading this, it would be, you tried it, you gave it a try. Okay. And so this is a, it's not me. I mean, as a professional, So folks, if you haven't had a chance to swap, make sure you have, you do. Why are you taking on other people's stuff? Well, and what the parent, that's my business partner, that is important. But it's also, right? This is why I'm also putting it into the parents. Okay. Higher intellectual. Strong. Negative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but wouldn't that be then to the person and have the So, let me look at that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if we're looking at me as an issue of durability, oh. it's facing like oh. you. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 What? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Right. That's a good Yes, yes, yes. So this may be the key to it all is the agility of phonetic telepathy. So I'm this is a really great indeed. But to have the experience of saying, oh, okay, I got this card in a certain poll, and then to use the booklet as as another layer of feedback. Because we haven't really done that yet today. So just as a little experiment, in case you'd like to, you know, do that for the next couple of minutes. When you spin them around, you essentially say, all right, this is the action we need. And that was the outcome. That really, I mean, that was. <laughs> you shamify the potentially negative experience. <laughs> I gave the zap of love. <laughs> oh, okay. the, uh, I'm the no, no hard oh, connect. Well, well, that's what I got last night. That was the one card out of my pile of shit. And <laughs> ego. And then oh, they like, like, lost some like, harmony. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What am I, what am I missing? Uh, I don't see that. <laughs> <laughs> less fight. Yeah. Physically yeah. centered. Like, not really. It <laughs> cuts out all the complications, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Seems all right. So see, then I'm the all point. right, we did several <laughs> things in that series of exercises. Yeah. And the first one that I want to question you about is how many of you uh, found it either very easy or very hard to come up with, you know, the the labels, the box, you know, boxes, and a question that goes along with them. We thought it well. We had them, but then we rearranged them because when we were in the reading, we discovered what worked better. Uh huh. You know, in other words, oh. maybe we were too limited in what we defined each of the positions as, and we elucidated them. Great. So mm -hmm. you could use it as a construction tool. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You could see, yeah. you could do a starting place and prototype, and then in rearranging, change the energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. And rearranging the question at the very end, and then and then we oh. did another reading, and then we actually at the end of that rearranged all the pot, all the negatives into positives, and that sort of like gave the outcome. 
Well, yeah. how, so we have the situation way of the goddess here, and then by flipping the polarity of the cards, this is how we get out of it. Yay! Okay. Exactly, right, like and that. and that is, and that is something that you how you can use the cards proactively as a directive out of something. Remember the detection, describe, and direction. So let's say something comes up in negative poles, um, and you want to say, well, how do I get out of this? Flip the card around. Turning it to its positive pole will tell you the route. I mean, it's really that simple. Then, also, if you're in the positive pole, and if you don't want to pay attention, flip it to the negative pole and see what might ha just happen. Happen if you don't do it. And if you don't pay attention, if you don't do it. Yeah, agreed. So both right. can be, be in frenetic, very instructive. <laughs> Um, okay. Um, what other comments did anyone have or would like to share about that you noticed about that uh, your exercises? First of all, did you uh, did anyone have some um, unusual ahas or experience with either the cards that they drew or what their uh, impressions about the cards that they drew were? Yeah. Okay. Well, some of these cards are. You know, you get an instant hit on what it is. The other, like the one we showed you, like what to look higher intellectual. Stuff, the higher intellectual is like we needed to kind of cogitate on that more. Like, what does that mean really, and what does it mean in the context of what we're asking? And at first, it doesn't seem to fit, but then you can kind of see where it does. So there's some that will hit you right away, I think, and others that you actually, you know, you shouldn't rush it. In other words, you should kind of, if, if they don't understand it, stop and meditate on it, or even if you need elucidation, maybe pull a second card to try to elucidate. Exactly. And, you know, you use the word cogitation, too. One of the things about this uh, deck is, you know, if you come up with, the reason I gave you the blank sheet for this is, uh, say you found something that this was really stimulating in some way, shape, or form. You can go home and relay it out just the way it was, you know, today. Mm -hmm. And you can sit with it on your, you know, I've done that. I've had things out for a couple of days just looking at them and seeing what kind of things percolated up over time. Another product, Michael Card's journal with blank things like what you have in there and different different exercises. <laughs> God, God, just again. more products as if you needed to work on another book. Yeah, right. well, that one's easier. <laughs> blank spaces, yes. you know? <laughs> and, and then you know different questions to ask and, and use for them as kind of co contemplative methods. Those things are very popular course, right yeah, now. Yeah, the web you know? version of that online. So that at, at the end of that, you get like the graph porn with all the stuff that you know your history of. Oh, cool! Yeah. The totally. graph porn? Did you call it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, web developers. Yeah, yeah right. Some I was people are say. really like into that type of we look pie chart. Overdone UI, and that's what we call it. Yeah, I've got a graph porn. I like it. It's interesting. Okay. Um, okay, question. When you drew your single card and uh, did your reading of the card in the pocket guide, um, did anyone uh, find anything? Light, humorous, interesting, or was it just kind of eh, whatever? I liked it. I liked it. I liked card. <laughs> what was the card? Higher moving. Uh, I didn't see any problem with the negative pole of lust, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you will! <laughs> <laughs> so just stay there for a while. Did yeah. anyone find that any of the responses that they read uh, were particularly poignant or? Go ahead. Well, I got this car, right? And uh, Nexus also. The Nexus. Huh? Lots of you people yeah. have been pulling Nexus yes. today, haven't you? But here is the thing. This is a question, and um, maybe you can answer it. Because the thing is, I'm doing one exercise, um, you know, from the, the Council of One, the, mm -hmm. the, the retraining your brain uh -huh. oh. and such. And optimized brain optimized. function. And so, and, and I'm doing also then, when I'm doing these, I hear or something to do this, right? And so that's like how it came, you know. And I still I don't know why I'm doing this, but it's very strong when I'm doing the the, the thing, oh. this one, you know, that one like that, mm -hmm. right? And so and I I hear to do this, I'm doing this, and I feel it in my brain. I don't know what's happening, but I feel it very strong. And it came exactly what I'm doing. So I was just wondering why is this oh, all the about? image, the imagery. Yes, the imagery came up maybe as like this, the way is. she's visualizing the circuit running is, I think, is what she's saying. Huh, interesting. Oh. Yeah. That lemnus you know. skit, that infinity symbol. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm doing uh -huh. when I use one of those circuits that's that. run. Is, yeah, so. but I don't know what. Because um, it, it makes your brain sing. Opens up your higher centers. Makes oh. your brain sing. 
Yeah. Okay, that resonates. Yeah. We got a smile out of your girlfriend. What, what's the What's the smile? Is there a uh, chuckle behind that smile? Um. Yeah. Because I got I did a three card reading and I had a three card reading earlier and I got the same card in the third position both times. And in my three position reading, it was a desire, obstacle, and action, and it was the masculine card. In, in the third position. Remember. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Pretty directive. Yeah. <laughs> action, action, action. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. I'm not exactly sure how to read all of that. I'll have to like meditate on that and kind of figure that out. But and remember, it's you, again, you, a can, thing. you can bring them home and literally lay them out and continue right. to look at them. And the energy, uh, the, 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 some of the visual energy, or just seeing the words, uh, just reminding you, refreshing it, uh, you know, may just, just have other things come to the surface.